Can we really change and rewrite our past? And if so, is it also possible to script out and design our future in the exact way we choose it to be? I'm here to tell you that the answer to this is yes. Yes, we can. And I've discovered that these ideas are in fact possible, and I'm the living proof of this reality. You see, the truth is, we each have this ability to rewrite our past, to create and live in the present reality we desire, and to design the future that we choose. And it's all being done through the power and the gift of our wonderful imagination. My name is Joey Kramer, and in December of 2020, I rewrote my DNA, which in turn changed the direction of my life forever. And today, I'm here to share this journey with you and to show you exactly how I achieved this and that it's possible for each of you to do the same. Yes, you can rewrite your past. And yes, you can begin creating the reality you truly desire. The simple truth is we've all been lied to. And the reality is we're far more powerful than we've ever been led to believe. For each of us, our sense of reality is created by the stories we tell ourselves of our past. We've been taught by our family, our friends, our teacher, religions, society, to believe that we're not in control of our lives. We've been taught to believe that we are all just victims in one way or another, and that we're each just living out our lives while we wait for the next ball to drop. This, my friends, is the lie we've each been told. And I'm here to tell you that that is simply not true. The fact is that this lie and the story we've each been living isn't caused by anyone or anything external, but rather it's a direct result that we've allowed ourselves to believe. And it actually comes from within us. And it's all just a figment of our own imagination. You see, the stories we choose to tell ourselves are in fact the stories we allow to shape our reality, which in turn create the present moment and thus the building blocks that design our future. As for me, the story I'd been telling myself for 41 years was exactly that, a story. And I and it had become the reality I had chosen to believe. Abandoned by my biological father at birth was just the beginning of my journey. Subsequently, I suffered most of my life from depression, where I turned to alcohol, drugs, sex, anything to fill the void that existed, all from this feeling of abandonment. Add to that, I'm also a survivor of childhood sexual abuse in addition, I suffer from Tourette syndrome. So, as you can imagine, I was a total mess on the inside. And the story I'd been telling myself was one of struggle, pain, and hardship. Even to the point of attempting suicide multiple times. I'm now 42 years old, and for my first 41 years of life, I lived with this belief that life was completely out of my control and that I was incapable of ever truly loving myself or anyone else for that matter, all because of this story I had chosen to write. Now, by the grace of God, in 2014, I finally began to put the pieces of my life back together. And there, I discovered a power that had always existed within me. And it's the exact same power that exists within each of you. This power worked, and it changed my life forever. It was only when I started taking responsibility for my past that my process of healing began. And now, I can honestly say, looking back on my life, it has been truly one of a one of fantasy. And I wouldn't have changed it for a single moment because it's created the man you see standing before you today. Now, over the past 18 months, my transformation and my evolution have been kicked into overdrive. And during that time, I read just shy of 300 books. 
I attended six Tony Robbins events over the course of nine months, and I helped my wife create a successful e-commerce business. And in December of 2020, I performed my own miracle of rewriting my DNA. Now you're probably asking yourself, how exactly did I rewrite my DNA? Well, that's the best part of my story. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have believed it if it hadn't actually have happened to me. So, as I mentioned, last year I attended six Tony Robbins events, and one of those was his signature event, Date with Destiny. I approached the event with one single purpose in mind. I was going to remove the anger I'd been living with all my life, but it was still raging inside me. I didn't even know, I didn't exactly know where it came from, but I believed this had to be the final piece of the puzzle that had been holding me back from finding my true destiny. The event began, and after day one, I started to realize that all this pent-up anger and rage that I'd been feeling my entire life had actually stemmed from this feeling of abandonment I'd suffered due to my biological father leaving when I was born. Imagine that. Now, I realized, though, that all this pain and all this misery I had imposed on myself was actually just a story I had created. And it was one that I had convinced myself to believe for the past 41 years. So on the morning of day number two, I decided I was going to sit down and write a letter to my biological father that I'd forgive him for this misdirected, misguided anger that I had towards him for his leaving. I never intended to actually send it, but I felt it would help me get this burden off my back. Needless to say, I didn't even make it through one sentence, and I broke down, and I cried. I cried like I'd never cried before, and that went on for a straight hour. And then, as quick as it happened, all of a sudden it was over. And it was as if this enormous weight had been lifted off of me. And as I finally gathered my composure, I looked back down at that letter I had attempted to write, and I realized there was no longer any need to actually write it. I was able to see now that this event and all the subsequent events in my life actually had nothing to do with him, or with anyone else for that matter, but in fact, had everything to do with me. He was not the cause of my pain, but rather, he was just the story and the lie I had created to shield myself from my own failures. I realized then that the only person I truly needed to forgive was myself for all the lies I'd been tricked into believing. So now, let's fast forward to day five of the event, which is known as Transformation Day. And that night, we performed a meditation exercise where each of us would go back and recall our earliest childhood memory. What appeared to me was an event I'd long forgotten about. And at that moment, I was seeing myself again as a five-year-old boy. And I was on a road trip with my mom down to Texas. We were going to visit my biological father in what I could only assume was an attempt to win him back. We were first told to go back into this moment and to place ourselves into our bodies and begin seeing and reliving that exact moment. What was I doing? What was I feeling? We were then told to remember what we were thinking just prior to that event happening. For me, I remembered I was just a small little boy who only wanted desperately to have a father in his life. I remembered how badly I wanted this. To feel loved, to feel normal, to be just like the other kids I knew, the ones that had dads. It was also at this moment that I began to feel the fear and the anxiety of this situation. I began thinking to myself, what if I screwed this up? What if he didn't love me? Would I be good enough for him? I then remembered that feeling I had, as if 
This was all on me. And if he didn't come home with us right now, it would ultimately be my fault. I realized, wow, what an amazing amount of pressure I had just put on myself as a small little child for something I couldn't even have possibly controlled. I watched myself as I played on the playground and I climbed across the monkey bars, all the while thinking, am I good enough for him? Is he seeing what an amazing son I can be? I thought to myself, if I was perfect in this moment, then surely this was all that was needed and he'd want to come home and he'd want to be my dad. Next, we were then told to put ourselves in the other person's body and to see and feel what they were seeing, thinking and feeling. I then began to see through my mother's eyes. I began to feel her pain, her desires and her fears. I now understood that all she ever really wanted for me was to give me, her only son, a real father. She desperately wanted me to be loved by this man who had left us. I truly felt the struggles she was having inside, since he had hurt her so badly when he initially left. But at this point, she didn't know where else to turn or what else to do. I felt her searching for something more from him, as she desperately wanted his love for the both of us. I then understood the pressure she must have been under and the pain she had suffered from the trust that had been lost so long ago. I felt her willingness to try anything in order to reunite our family. As if I, and as I felt this, I began crying for her and for her struggle. Finally, we were asked if there's anyone else involved, we needed to put ourselves into their body and into their mind and see and feel through their eyes. It was at that moment that I entered into my father's body and into his mind and instantly I felt his pain and his stress of this meeting. I now saw the fear and the anxiety he had about the idea of coming back home and of being a husband and a father. The fact was, He'd run all the way down to Texas to escape us and to remove himself from his responsibilities as a husband and as a father. And now, here we were, trying to control him and his life, trying to convince him that this was his place, and that he needed to be back home with us. I experienced what he was feeling at that moment, and I saw what he was seeing. And it was only then that I realized we were all just hurting and afraid of each other. We each wanted something more that sadly we were unable to have or to give to one another at that moment. When the exercise finished, whew, all I can say is I was no longer the person I had just been only a few minutes before. In that moment, I had seen I felt true compassion, and I now understood the meaning of true forgiveness. I experienced love in a way that I had never known it before, and it unlocked something from within me that I didn't even know I had. It was such an amazing feeling, but little did I know there was still so much more to come. The event ended the next day, and I knew then what had to be done. While it took me another two days, I finally found the courage to pick up the phone, and that's when I called my mom. I wanted to share with her the experience I had just had and the healing that had just taken place for me. The conversation began with me telling her how much I loved her and how I had forgiven her for anything she thought she may have ever done wrong in raising me. I told her that I also forgave myself for the story I'd been telling that scared little boy for all those years and for the lie I'd been choosing to believe. I told her that I even forgave Robert for his leaving 
and that I understood why he did what he did. I thanked her, and I told her how much I appreciated everything she had done for me for all those years. She went on to tell me that she had wished at times she would have been harder on me. But I responded to her, Mom, you did everything exactly right in the exact way that it had to be done. I reminded her of how fragile I had been back then, and that in all likelihood, if she would have been any harder on me, I probably would have broken. Now at this point in our conversation, the tears were flowing from both of us, and that's when she paused and said to me, Joey, there's something I have to tell you. She went on to say that she'd been keeping a secret from me for 41 years now, and that there were only three other people in the entire world that knew what it was. My stepfather, Bill, my biological father, Robert, and my uncle, John, who had passed away a year before. She said that each of them were all determined to take it to their graves with them, which my uncle ironically did. And now, apparently, this secret had been weighing so heavily on her for the last 41 years, I could sense her need to release herself from it, and she began to tell me the truth. Through her tears, she said to me, Joey, Robert is not your father. And at that moment, it got really quiet. And I thought to myself, did she just say what I think she just said? So with a little excitement and a little anticipation, I responded with a smile to her and I said, go on. It was only then that she began to tell me how badly she wanted a child and that Robert was unable to bear children of his own. So in her attempts, she sought out every possible path she could to, for her own child. She said she even went as far as the Colombian embassy to see about adopting an orphan. Now, at this point, I, I had to stop her in my amazement and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that why I get so tan in the summertime and why I'm the only person in my family with bright blue eyes? Are you telling me I'm half Colombian? She responded sobbingly, no. And to my disappointment, I realized that I was not the exotic child of a Colombian drug lord. She did go on to tell me that she had been working at a local hospital in Kansas City. And it was there that they were doing a new experimental procedure at that time known as in vitro fertilization. She decided to enroll in that experiment. And both her and Robert, they signed off on all the confidentiality paperwork. And so it was. And at that moment, I discovered I was no longer the son of an alcoholic, womanizing man who had abandoned me at birth. But in fact, I was actually the biological son of a medical student who later became a doctor at that very same hospital. Needless to say, my mind was totally blown at that point. And that's when I realized what just happened. In real time, I literally rewrote my entire story, including my DNA. And I realized that that story I'd been telling myself all these years was in fact just one big lie. This man, whom I blamed for all the pain and suffering for the first 41 years of my life, turns out was simply nothing more than my mom's first husband, who just so happened to leave her when I was born. From all of this, I found that through my own compassion, forgiveness, and love, I was able to first accept my past, and then I was able to completely rewrite it into an entirely new story. And not only did I rewrite my entire past, but I also opened the doors to a new and brighter future for me, for my mom, and for both of my two sons, who are now, by the way, the biological 
grandchildren of a doctor. So, unfortunately for them, they have zero excuses not to succeed in life. And if this all wasn't amazing enough, I also realized that through the rewriting of my own story and of my own DNA, I was also able to set my mom free from this secret and this lie that she'd been forced to carry within her for the past 41 years. I discovered that by loving her unconditionally and by taking full responsibility for my own past, in addition to forgiving myself and everyone involved, I unleashed this power within me that now had the ability to create and rewrite a whole new story that was now of my own choosing. For each of us here, our lives are being lived right here and right now in this very moment in time. And the truth is, there is only this moment. There's nothing else. When we dwell on the past, and blame ourselves or others for our failures, we're only continuing to live in this lie that we've all been taught to believe. Each of us possess this amazing power and this ability to decide exactly how our story will play itself out. And it's up to us to choose how it will be written. I discovered that through the power of compassion, forgiveness, and love, we can each discover this power and our own greatness that's hiding inside of us all. After all, what do we have to lose in committing to and practicing these three principles? I can assure you of one thing. If you go home from here today and you continue living by the same story, and the same lies you've been telling yourself about your past, then I promise things will stay the same for you. Hell, they might even get worse, but there is another option, a better one. Instead, I suggest you go home from here and begin living by these three principles, compassion, forgiveness, and love, and start your own process of forgiving yourself for the stories that have been allowed to play out in your mind. You see, when we stop allowing the stories of our past to define us, we can then begin to embrace the possibility that our imagination and our desires can and do create our reality. And then, and only then, can we rewrite the lies of our past and begin scripting a new history for ourselves. As you design a future any which way you choose to dream it. So in closing, the one question I have for each of you as you leave here today, how will you choose to write the script and the story of your life? Will you embrace these three principles and take back your power, or will you continue to allow the future to be written by your past? The choice is truly yours. Thank you all.